Brisbane property prices have boomed almost 40% in the last 12 months. In this video, we'll be covering those suburbs that still have legs, that still have lots of potential for short-term growth and, of course, long-term growth. Which are the ones that you should be investing in right now? If that's what you're interested in, Brisbane, where to invest, property investing, continue watching. My name's PK and I help people build passive income through property investing, through the accelerator program, mentorship program using data without needing a $15,000 buyer's agent every single time. In this channel, you will learn about three things, the local and global economy, property investing, and how to achieve financial happiness. All right, so hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, Let's get going. So on this screen, you can see much like the two videos I've just done on Adelaide and Perth, how the ripple effect helps us identify the next up and coming area. So the two things, the two layers that I'm going to be taking us through is number one, the median value in Brisbane for different suburbs using a color scheme. And the second thing is the 12 month growth using a color scheme so we can see how the ripple effects identifies those suburbs potentially still undervalued okay so this first one is just the median value all right you can see the legend the darker it is the more expensive the cheaper it is the lighter okay so let's get rid of this legend you can see this is brisbane proper clearly in a city is the most expensive in any capital city or regional area. Most times, you know, the closest to CBD is more expensive. And you can see that, you know, it's still kind of slightly dark around here, uh, middle ring or inner middle ring, and then it gets lighter and lighter. And then you have these pockets where, you know, even though it's far out, um, comparatively speaking, it's more expensive. So there's these kind of satellite epicenters as well. So let's go on the north side, then we'll go on the south side, east and west. Okay, so which are the suburbs that are neighboring other suburbs that are more expensive than them? And as they become unaffordable, the price pressure will wash over them. So on the north side, I mean, check out this area. You've got this area, Castledine and Aspley, which are, you know, getting quite expensive right next to Albany Creek and surrounds. But you've got this one right here, Bracken Ridge, where this shade is quite bright, telling us that it's much cheaper. It's much more inexpensive than the surrounding suburbs. A similar phenomenon occurs around Bray Park, Strathpine, potentially Petrie, Callinga, then up here Deception Bay, Rothwell, Burpingary. And, and let me just tell you right now, like I've said in these previous videos as well, this is not the only thing that a property investor needs to look at. So it doesn't mean that, oh, hey, PK said that Strathpine may have potential. Let's just go buy in Strathpine. There's 35 data factors you need to understand to understand their coefficients, thresholds, weightings to really use a data science or a data driven approach to property investing. Anyone can do it if it's made easy for them. But this is just one. It's a ripple effect. And according to this, on the north side, you've got potential in this pocket around here, Caboolture, um, Tubal, coming down south, Burpengary, stay clear of Newport now, you can see it's really expensive. And if we go down to the Ipswich area, you can see that the, you know, Ipswich here, um, this surrounding area is relatively cheap. Now, of course, there's reasons why it is cheap and there's reasons why it will remain cheap as well. So it doesn't mean that you should just go and invest in these areas, but this shows a really cool sort of uh, like this one right here, Wacol. It's sort of surrounded almost on all sides by more expensive suburbs. So, you know, a theory could be that this is the next one to rise even more in value as people over here, especially Oxley, I mean, fantastic suburb. It's really become a blue chip suburb. You know, people are priced out and they go into surrounding suburbs. So, you know, that at least gives some preliminary analysis. And then um, and then you've got these other areas down south um, here, um, which which are also interesting. So Daisy Hill, Springwood, Underwood, Shaler Park, maybe the better areas in terms of socio demographic in Logan. 
Um, and then you've got these areas right here, Kingston, Logan Central, which haven't, you know, Woodridge still cheaper than surrounds. Now, would I put my money in those areas? No, but that's for other reasons, like, you know, percentage of renters and everything. You know, of course, even the worst areas boom in a boom time. But over the 10, 20 year period, we want to make sure that we're actually investing in solid, tenantable you know, low maintenance properties. And much of Logan isn't that, even though it's boomed in the short term. But, you know, don't sort of listen to me, make up your own mind. But you can see there's an interesting price differential. And then if we go into more premium east side, you can see how much potential um, there is in Wynnum West and Hemant and Manly West and, um, and this sort of area here. Is it Tingalpa? I want to say it's Tingalpa. Yeah, I think it's, it's Tingalpa around here. Still so much potential because these areas are very expensive. These areas are very expensive. We've got this pocket here. There's a bit of industrial and commercial precincts here as well, but plenty of potential, at least for arbitrage. Look into that further. And then let's see how this is, how this map changes when we say, all right, how much has a place grown? How much has a suburb grown over the last 12 months? And see which are the areas that haven't grown as much that may have some catching up to do. So the darker the purple it is, the more it's grown, 40% up here. And then negative is kind of dark red or light red. So we want to see some areas that are light purple or maybe even white. So on the north side, I mean, it's this all dark, 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 dark. But hey, You've got this area, Rothwell, that hasn't really gone up too much. That might p provide some potential again next to Aspley, which has gone up more than 40%. You've got Zilmere that hasn't done as well. Brackenridge, which I mentioned just before. I can tell you right now that we probably bought dozens of houses in Strathpine, Bray Park, Brackenridge more than six months ago, more than a year ago. Um, but they still have plenty of... Um, you know, growth left in them. We don't want to be buying in a place like Aspley right now. There's no reason to buy in a suburb that's gone up more than 40% in the last 12 months. Be careful of that, regardless of what your property investing company is advising you. But you've got this area as well here, you know, Nudgy, um, Banyo um, over here that haven't grown as much. So if you were to invest in Brisbane, if you did want to plonk down $800,000, $900,000, do it in this pocket as opposed to this pocket, at least according to this chart. Now, none of this is financial advice, but, you know, these are just some hopefully somewhat interesting thoughts. Caboolture has gone up a lot as well. Um, but maybe Beechmere has a little bit more potential, okay? Because it hasn't grown, it hasn't grown that much. Let's go to the Ipswich side now. Now there might be reasons like flooding why some areas haven't gone as much up as much. But you can see, relatively speaking, there are these areas like Coal Falls, um, this one over here that haven't risen as much, okay? Um, and then let's go. And, and, and by the way, let me just go on a rant for a second. This whole area like here um, and South Ripley, you know, they haven't gone up as much. A lot of property investment companies, house and land packages, they spruik you. But really bad areas for the long term because there's just unlimited land supply if you go further out here. Um, okay, let's go now to oftentimes people's best suburbs or most favorite, favorite area, um, which is the Logan Shire. Um, you can see, this is really interesting here, that, you know, on a growth perspective, Rochdale South, um, Eight Mile Plains, Runcorn have gone up a lot, but Rochdale proper, and then this suburb here, um, over here, this is, there's some potential here around Underwood, okay, they haven't gone up as much, you can see that the, the color is, you know, lighter purple, as is the case with this one over here. Now, I don't know what the suburb is. I can't tell you much more about it, but at least there's some um, food for thought. And then let's go to East Brisbane. Um, we previously talked about Tingalpa and in, in these areas here. And you, once again, this data backs that up by saying, look, the West, sorry, the beachside suburbs have done really well on the East side. But, you know, they, these inner sort of, 
slightly inner suburbs haven't done as well and they were cheaper if you remember the last um, scheme that I showed you. Seven Hills seems to be a good pocket surrounded by some growth maybe that will flood over, forgive the pun, uh, wash over into Seven Hills but you know this is not the only thing to look at in terms of property investing. Um, I'll, this is called Logic Data, I'll leave a link to it below. You can do your own analysis right and at least this way you can become at least half educated or a quarter or a one twentieth educated so that people who are spruiking stuff online and people like me um, who are just trying to sell you something, hopefully that's not me, you know, you can actually see, hey, are they, do they know what they're talking about? At least have some semblance of education, education so you can pick the right service provider to help you, okay? But look, macro, Brisbane, it's gone up so much. There are better places to invest in Brisbane. However, if you want to stick to a capital city and that is your investment thesis, there is still some fantastic opportunities in Brisbane. But if I was putting money, if I was starting off and I want to spend, you know, half a million dollars on an investment property, I would not be doing it in Brisbane right now. Okay, guys, hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on. And do you want me to do any other areas? I've done this ripple effect scheme on Perth, on Adelaide, we've done it on Brisbane, any other locations, leave a link below. If I get more than 10, you know, suggestions for a particular location, more than 10 people saying a particular location, city or town, I'll do that video. But, you know, this is... Hopefully this is just, you know, once again, filling your mind, filling your brain with more and more education so you're not only becoming inspired to do property investing or start it, but you're actually starting to kind of declutter, demystify it in your mind. It's so rewarding, you know, just do it. <laughs> All right, guys, leave links below to the Property Investment Accelerator, but also free resources like my podcast and also the Facebook group with more than 14,000 people. Hit the subscribe button. My name is PK. I wish you all the very best. Catch you later.